Have you wondered what is, uh, how to use the autopilot with uh, an instrument approach? Today on Flywire we're going to fly this Aspen KFC 200 with a GTN 750 uh, doing a DME arc to an ILS. And then we're going to do a, a, another a VOR with a DME arc and we'll do that one fully with the autopilot. But just to explore, explore that. Check it out. Get your Easterwood uh, ILS 35 and our VOR 29 plates out and follow along with me. Hi, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to fly uh, using mostly autopilot the ILS uh, 35 to Easterwood Field at College Station. That's K. Charlie Lima Lima. And we're going to do the DME arc. We're going to do that on autopilot and then pick up the ILS by hand as we uh, get in close. And then uh, we're going to do the uh, uh, VOR runway 29 as long as tower doesn't gripe too much. And we're going to do the DME arc on that. We'll do that all on autopilot and then kick it off and uh, see how it goes. So Bob's going to be my safety pilot. And for those that are concerned from uh, the other IFR video, I made these uh, for vision restricting device with uh, my uh, uh, correction. One of the cool things about four flights is it puts the uh, notams that apply to the runway. Let's check it. Approach lighting at the surface, and Rowdy, locator of monitors, not monitoring anymore, no big deal. We have it in the database, so we're good to go. This is the ILS. 3.5, that's what we're going to shoot at Easterwood Field. The localizer DME is 110.55. Approach course is 346. We have 7,000 feet available. Touchdown zone elevation is 311. ADF DME uh, required for procedure, and we have it in the database, so we're good to go. For an up ALS, it's uh, not applicable for us. Caddy, we at AB today. Mausers uh, for approach lights. ATIS is 126.85, we've already listened to that. Uh, we're talking to approach control 34.3. Easterwood Tower is 118.5. We're going to Osme. That's on the College Station uh, Vortac for 249 for 15 DME. We'll do the 15 DME arc at 2,000 feet and uh, all the way around to intercept the local localizer. Uh, going into Rowdy, the initial fix there is uh, Jerba. In our database, and we'll follow that. So we'll be at 2,000 feet, and we we'll roll out on 346, intercept the localizer. When we intercept the glide path, we'll cross Rowdy, and we'll be at about 1,968 feet. Straight in for the ILS 35, A and B for us, depending on our speeds, are going to be 511 feet, uh, half mile, viz 200. Ceiling, I like to use both of them. I like to use ceiling and viz because uh, I'm scared of Mr. Approach is going to be climbing straight up to 2500 to ICLL North Course to Deers Intersection and hold at 11.5 DME and we'll figure out what we're going to do then. This is my descent down to uh, target 2100 feet. I set up in the autopilot, I'm in GPSS, I deselect altitude and I've got the Aspen set for the altitude, my target altitude, and I hit the pre-select which is up above the second Aspen there on the right and that arms the uh, altitude pre-select. What will happen is, is I get the yellow box warning that says I'm at 2100 feet, I'm 200 feet above that, and then I get another warning at uh, 2100 feet and the altitude, the pre-select engages the altitude on the KFC 200 and levels off. It doesn't level off immediately but it will uh, get up there eventually. Now we're tracking into Osme uh, for that 15 DME arc. Dur during the whole descent, I've held pretty close to the yellow line. Unless it's really bumpy, I'm going to do that. And I do it by reducing the power, the manifold pressure, in two inch increments down to uh, hold that uh, below the yellow line. And then as I get to my altitude, I reduce it to about 18, and the airspeed will generally bleed off in this airplane, depending on the weight, to about 120 ish. And that's what I'm going to shoot the approach at, is 120 until I get to the final when I start backing off the speed a little bit. Now we're approaching the arc and we're just going to follow, we're going to let the autopilot and the GPSS do this. And the KFC 200 of course you need to be in heading mode uh, for the GPSS to work. Since we're actually going to hand fly this ILS, uh, we're not going to be able to watch the coupled mode 
but uh, I'll do that on another approach. And full disclosure, Tower and Approach wasn't happy with us doing this because it was opposite direction. It seems like Fort Worth, they don't have a problem doing this, but here they do. We're just going to shoot the arc and the initial intercept and we'll break off. And what I'll do is I'll substitute another RNAV approach so we can look at the final and how the autopilot reacts, how we manage the autopilot and do the couple for the coupled approach. Here we're getting, here we're flying the arc and the really cool thing is, is what it's really doing is it's drawing little waypoints. It puts in a whole bunch of little waypoints to form that arc. And you can see from the 750 that it's only changing your uh, uh, heading by a degree or so all the way around the arc. It's really, really very cool. And again, my, my, my speed's pretty much constant. Uh, my power setting's pretty much constant. And if I wanted to, uh, sometimes I go to 2300 RPM, but uh, today I'm not landing. I'm going to stay airborne. And Pretty much I'm going to use 2500 as my setting. It takes a while to go around the arc. The steer point that's in the database is Jerba and uh, what's transparent to us is uh, what's happening. It's created a whole bunch of little waypoints along that arc. We can see that by how it's uh, drawing those steering commands that sends it to the Aspen. And the Aspen drives the autopilot. We're pretty much at the altitude we're uh, going to shoot the approach at. So we don't really have to worry about worry about speed. We don't have to worry about altitude, any further descents, and all that, until we uh, intercept the glide path. I'm going to leave the power setting just as it is until I put the gear down. And when I put the gear down and go to approach flaps, then the airplane's going to slow to about a hundred-ish in that range. Start my descent. So that's my plan, and I will gradually reduce my airspeed to my target uh, short final threshold speed is about 85 knots. Stabilized is I'm doing this all under control. This isn't a jet. I'm not going to use the stabilized fully configured at a thousand feet. Generally I'm going to shoot uh, approach flaps until I'm in a position to land and if it's the weather's low well I'm going to use that as my breakout. Wait for full flaps until I break out of the weather and then I'm uh, landing to shirt and I'm going to go to full flaps. I'm going to have to increase the trim sure but with approach flaps that one of the reasons I like it is because there's very little I need to do to go around. For a go around, all I have to do is uh, accelerate, stop the descent, uh, start the climb. Once I have a positive rate, get the gear up, and everything's under control. My uh, my acceleration, my speed is good, my trim is good. There's such a trim airplane, huge changes. Then I'm going to get my flaps up, and I'm going to climb out to whatever I'm going to do. Let the autopilot do the intercept. And since I'm in GPSS, it's going to correct for winds. Aspen is set, so it doesn't really show winds that often, and unless they're above 30. Consistently, it'll show it above 30. Less than that, it might or might not show them. Doesn't mean there aren't any winds today, but they're negligible according to Aspen. Once we get to Jerba, we're almost there, about a mile and a half from there. The box is going to figure out what it needs to do is to intercept. Boom! It says there's the intercept. You can see from the CDI displacement but, uh, that we're pretty much almost on it. And it switches to Vorlook, so essentially it's intercepting the localizer for me. And I will then, once I turn final, I'm going to go ahead and hand fly. As promised, I'm going to show the uh, a fully coupled approach, autopilot approach. This one's going to be the RNAV 17 Borland Field 50 Fox. It's already, the approach is already loaded in via the navigator and it is sending it to the autopilot. We're on a GPSS on the Aspen and it's going to figure out how to make that turn. It's doing it right now to uh, turn from a FIFI, the, final, the initial approach fix, to the final approach fix is a Kato and it's figuring that, it, that, that turn out right now. And um, my speeds uh, were set up. And as you can see, uh, like about 20 inches, it gives me about 120. Okay, we're going to do the descent uh, just like we always, I always do it in autopilot. The cool feature of the Pro Max is it tells you where you will intercept the uh, altitude uh, during your descent. That's pretty cool. Okay, now uh, I'm worried. I've got it all set up. I've got pretty much got my speed under control. I'm going to plan it on configuring a little bit early. I'm going to get my gear, my flaps out uh, before we hit the glide path uh, for this fully coupled approach. So it makes it gives the autopilot the biggest chance of uh, making a nice smooth approach instead of having to rush. <laughs> so here we are approaching 2,500, 
and uh, well before Ocado, everything's going pretty smooth. Just a tad fast, not a big deal. Well within gear speed, the uh, flap speed for approach is the same as uh, approach flaps is the same as the gear speed, so not a, not a big problem. Remember, I only use approach flaps here. There, I've uh, hit approach coupled and the autopilot's figured it out, it's going to be happy, it sees the glide path, that's coming down, and we're about a mile from Mikado. Everything's going pretty smooth, and I'm going to go ahead and put, put the gear down, and we'll slow down just a little bit, and you'll see glide slope come in as it uh, captures the glide slope boat, there we go. So now the autopilot's in charge, it's large and in charge, making the descent, okay? All under control of the autopilot. I'm going to run this down to uh, I hand fly the final portion of the approach. I do not use the autopilot below that. Uh, but uh, my job right now is to monitor how we doing on glide path, how we doing on LNAV, uh, how we doing on airspeed, you know, how's the nav going, and uh, monitoring all that stuff. That green triangle is the uh, marker for uh, the 500 foot mark, and you'll see the yellow triangle is the warning that your minimum's coming up. I set the minimum during the approach brief, and uh, I'll point it out to you right here uh, pretty, pretty quick uh, so you can see that. And that gives you a 100-foot buffer to show you where uh, where your minimum is and you're going below that. And I'm going to click off the autopilot and hand fly the rest of the approach. Well, there you have it. Uh, the Aspen Pro Max upgrade, which is pretty cool. The screens are much better. I like it when it gets the uh, digits get big, and you can see those uh, a little easier. <laughs> um, uh, and the quality, well, the quality is just a lot better. The processing speed is good. Uh, so I think it was worth it. It was a good thing to do, and, you know, uh, all new processors. You get a new warranty, all that kind of stuff. It's all good stuff. So hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, what we did today was... Uh, uh, use the autopilot, uh, the Aspen, and the KFC 200 to shoot uh, pretty much the DME arc to an ILS uh, down at College Station and watch the arc. It's a pretty complex job. It's a pretty cool thing. And then uh, the other thing is uh, we did the fully coupled approach for the final and the descent all the way to minima uh, for the RNAV 17 back here at Borland. So uh, talked about all the buttons and you got you got to hit and the sequence and power settings, speeds, et cetera, things like that. Hope I covered it all for your satisfaction. I had a couple of questions from some viewers, so hopefully I covered that for you. If I didn't, leave me a comment, send me an email, and uh, let me know. Let's uh, have a conversation. Let's work this out. Enjoyed shooting it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, hit subscribe. If you want to get a notification of the next uh, video, uh, hit the bell. And, well, I mean, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Flywire.